हेलो एवरी वन दिस इज थर्टी फोर्थ लेक्चर ऑफ द कोर्स प्रोसेस इक्विपमेंट डिजाइन एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल इन दिस लेक्चर एंड हियर वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट डिस्कशन ऑन इवेपोरेटर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल डिस्कस दैट वॉट इज इवेपोरेटर वॉट आर द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ इवेपोरेटर वॉट आर इट्स एप्लीकेशन एंड देन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस एंड देन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द डिजाइन पार्ट ऑफ इवेपोरेटर इन डिटेल राइट सो लेट्स इंट्रोड्यूस द इवेपोरेटर्स एंड एज फार एज यू नो दैट इवेपोरेटर्स आर द यूनिट वेयर वी कॉन्सेंट्रेट द फीड राइट वेयर द फीड इज कॉन्सेंट्रेटेड बाई रिमूविंग द सॉल्वेंट फ्रॉम दिस ओके सो एज फार एज इवेपोरेशन इज कंसर्न इट इज अ टाइप ऑफ वेपराइजेशन ऑफ लिक्विड दैट ओनली अकर्स ऑन द सर्फेस ऑफ द लिक्विड okay so that evaporation is basically the process where liquid is removing where liquid is converted into the vapor but only at the surface okay and secondly it is done at any temperature okay evaporation is carrying out at any temperature wherever the temperature difference is observed okay so this is the same process so this is the process where liquid is converting into the vapor and it is similar to vaporization so it means that vaporization and evaporation is the same thing no as far as conversion from liquid to vapor is concerned it is the same however we can have some operational differences such as vaporization takes place in the bulk okay as we understand as we understand the boiling okay so this is the bulk phenomena and evaporation is basically the surface phenomena vaporization takes place only at a particular temperature where liquid reaches to its boiling point okay however evaporation can be carried out at any temperature where temperature difference is observed fine so in evaporation removal of solvent by vaporization from solids that are not volatile okay so in evaporation solvent is converted into the vapor and that solvent is not volatile in nature okay so if solvent will be removed from the feed obviously solute concentration will be increased in the feed and we can obtain thick feed as the outcome of the evaporators as the outcome of the evaporation right so it is normally used to produce concentrated liquid often prior to crystallization okay so that is the unit which is work so that is the unit which is available before the crystallization but a dry solid product can be obtained with some specialized design okay so evaporators are usually used to op so evaporators are usually used to obtain concentrated liquid which is before the crystallization okay so what will happen in crystallization when the evaporation is taking place whatever solution i am having that is at the saturation condition okay and uh, what will happen in crystallization in crystallization sudden pressure drop occurs okay and therefore whatever saturated liquid is available in evaporator when it enters into the crystallizer it is reaching to super saturation condition where precipitation of the solid occur and the crystallization is and the crystals are formed okay so we will discuss crystallization and crystallizer design separately and here we are mainly focusing on evaporators so let's see why we need the evaporation okay so here we have some points like it reduces the transportation cost if liquid is available and if concentration of the liquid is less okay so volume of the liquid will be very high okay so transportation of high volume liquid is costly in comparison to concentrated liquor okay so therefore we carry out evaporation before transportation of liquid is done okay now why it is so in many industry instead of installing a separate effluent treatment plant they used to install a centralized effluent 
a centralized effluent treatment plant in which the waste is brought from different industry. Okay. So, in that case what we have to do the evaporators are used to concentrate the waste at the plant side and then that waste is brought to the ETP that is effluent treatment plant. So, transportation cost of thick liquor is comparatively less in comparison to lighter in comparison to lean liquid right. And second option we have is the storage cost because the storing of uh, because the storing of thick liquor is because the storing of thick liquor is cheaper in comparison to large volume lean liquor right and uh, and uh, evaporations are and evaporation is required when we need to prepare the feed for next unit operation such as drying and crystallization as we have already discussed in the previous slide. And if we need to recover the solvent we have to carry out the evaporation. Okay. So, evaporation is not only used to produce the thick liquor, it is also used to produce the vapor it is also used to recover the solvent. Okay. Now, how it is recovered because when evaporation is taking because when evaporation is taking place then the solvent is converted into the vapor okay. and if that solvent is let us say water which is in most of the cases it is right. So, water is converted into the vapor. So, when water is converted into the vapor it is not including the impurities of the water. Vapor is quite pure. So, vapor is comparatively pure water. Okay. So, when that vapor is condensed, we can obtain more, we can obtain clear water in comparison to the slurry. Okay. So, in this way, we can recover the water and that water can be used for different purposes. Okay. And in the similar line, we can recover the solvent from the slurry okay? and evaporation is used there. Further, as far as different applications are concerned, evaporations are used, evaporation is used to concentrate the milk to produce condensed milk. Okay? It is used to prepare the juices, it is used to prepare the juices where concentrated juice are obtained and it is used to concentrate sodium hydroxide sodium chloride from aqueous solution to produce salt okay so that so evaporation is very important as far as salt production is concerned and you must have heard about desalination process also okay so what happens in desalination where we convert the sea water into useful water okay so in that case main so so, in that case main product is vapor not the thick liquor okay? because thick liquor contains more amount of salt and that is further used to produce the salt. But my main aim is that I can produce drinkable water or useful water from sea water okay? and that is basically the vapor which is generated in evaporation in desalination process. So, when that vapor is condensed, we convert that. So, when vapor is condensed, we use that for different purposes, right. So, along with this, we have other application also like ether recovery from fat extraction, okay. And if I ask you what are the industrial applications of evaporator, okay. So, you should understand that evaporators are integral part of some of the industries such as sugar industry where sugar is prepared through crystallization. So, before crystallizer evaporator so before crystallizer evaporators are used ok. In the similar line we use evaporator in pulp and paper industry ok where paper is usually prepared with the wood chip. So, wood chip when it is washed with the solution, the solution contain many organic compound which is available in wood. Okay. So, clean wood is basically transported to paper manufacturing and the 
solution which is left which contains sufficient amount of organic we do not throw this we usually prepare steam from this ok. So, to prepare the steam we basically concentrate this liquor up to certain percentage let us say around 50 percent or 60 percent and after that it is burned to produce steam and so the electricity right. So, in this way the organic compounds available in liquor are used and in that case multiple effect evaporators are used. So, you can have sugar industry, pulp and paper industry, you can have desalination and all these process includes evaporators right. And now we will discuss some properties of the liquid which are suitable for evaporation process. So, these properties are the concentration of the liquor foaming tendency of the liquor and scale formation of the liquor and temperature sensitivity of the material and finally, we have material of construction. So, you can see based on all these parameter we decide suitable type of evaporator for a given application right. So, in that way these properties are very important and now we will focus on performance of evaporator. Now, as far as performance of evaporators are concerned for this we have two basic criteria first is the capacity and second is the steam economy. So, let us discuss capacity first. So, as far as capacity of an evaporator is concerned it is defined as the number of kg of water evaporated per hour. Okay. So, how much water is being evaporated in one hour that is basically th that is basically the capacity of the evaporator right and uh, it is given by the simple equation that is Q is equal to U A delta T and I am not going into detail of each parameter that I assume that I assume that all these parameters you know already and next parameter we have is the steam economy or we consider that as evaporator economy also. So, economy of an evap so economy of an evaporator is defined as the number of kg of water evaporated per kg of steam fed to the evaporator ok. So, steam economy and evaporator economy you can define as water evaporated divided by steam consumed right. So, in this way we consider steam economy as a unit less quantity ok. Now, as far as steam economy of one evaporator is concerned it is usually 0 0.8 ok. So, whatever steam is provided 80 percent of that steam is used to generate the water right. So, in that way we consider steam economy as 0 0.8 and that is basically the thumb criteria ok. Now, if I ask you what are the methods to increase economy of the evaporator ok. The very first method in that case is use of multiple effect evaporation system ok. Now, what is this multiple effect evaporator system? When we carry out the evaporation process in evaporator whatever solvent is available that is converted into vapor right. So, instead of condensing that vapor and get the clean product what we can do we can use that vapor as a heating media in another evaporator ok. Because if you consider the heating media in evaporator that is basically the steam. Okay. However, if I am having the vapor it also contains sufficient amount of latent heat which can be used as a heating media right. So, vapor generated in first effect is used as a heating media in second effect and whatever vapor is generated in second effect it is used as a heating media in third effect and so on right. So, in this way you can use steam once only and you can generate water in multiple effects ok. So, many a times you can so many a times you can generate the water or you can remove the solvent ok consuming steam only in first effect right. So, in this way multiple effect evaporators are used in fact this phenomena you must have observed in your 
houses also like when we cook the food okay like when we cook the food let's say inside the pan food is cooked okay and that pan is covered with the lid okay and above that lid if we put some material in bowl so that material will also be heated up okay so what i am doing basically whatever vapor is generated in the pan it is heating the lid and that heat which is available in the lid is transferred to the bowl and so the material which is inside the bowl okay and if you have gone through and if you have gone through famous temples okay there when bhandaras are going on so how the food is cooked okay because what they do they what they do they basically take very big pan at the bottom okay and below that fire is there okay and at the mouth of that pan they put another pan which contains some other material okay so whatever vapor is generated in the bottom pan it is basically giving heat to the pan above to this okay and the food which is available in second pan or the upper pan it also cooks it is also cooked okay so in that way we consider multiple effect evaporator in our day to day life okay and uh, we have industrial application of this also which we have already discussed so when i am considering that economy of the evaporator it can be increased when we use the vapor generated in first effect as heating media in second and so on okay so this is one point only so this is one method only second method we have is the vapor recompression okay so what happens with the vapor region so what happens with the vapor recompression okay so what happens with the vapor recompression whatever vapor is generated in first effect it is it can be used as a heating media in second effect but it cannot be used as a heating media in first effect right in the similar example in the similar line whatever vapor is generated in second effect it can be used as a heating media in third effect but not in second effect as well as in first effect so to do that we have to compress the vapor okay when we compress the vapor we basically increase the temperature and pressure of the vapor and so it can be used in previous effects in comparison to subsequent effects right so vapor recompression is the option to increase economy of the system now when we consider economy of the evaporator usually the thumb rule is it is 0.8 into number of effects okay let's say if i am having n number of effects in a multiple effect evaporator so economy of the system should be 0.8 into n okay and uh, we can also consider boiling point elevation and we can also consider boiling point elevation in evaporator now what is this boiling point elevation when we have the solution where some other component is present okay which we consider as the impurity fine so for that solution vapor pressure reduces in comparison to pure solution okay so in that case what will happen more heat is required for the desired evaporation okay so in that case temperature of the solution increases in comparison to that in comparison to that of pure solvent so the difference of these two temperature like temperature of the mixture minus temperature of the solvent it gives the boiling point elevation okay i hope it is clear to you and this point we will further discuss in subsequent lectures now we will focus on types of evaporator and for that we should first understand what are the basic parts of an evaporator and these are basically heat exchanger vapor separator condenser and vacuum pump okay so as far as evaporation of so as far as so as far as operation of evaporators are concerned here we have heat exchanger vapor liquid separator and along with we have the recirculation pipe okay and whatever vapor is generated from here it enters into the condenser and whole system is attached to the vacuum pump okay so 
as far as operation is concerned then what will happen here this is the heat exchanger which is basically shell and tube type heat exchanger where boiling takes place or evaporation takes place inside the tubes right in shell side we have steam which works as a heating media okay so you can understand that uh, feed when it is entering into this heat exchanger it is entering it is entering into the tube side right so so what will happen when the feed enters into the tube side vapor formation takes place vapor formation is taking place and when it exits and when it exits the tube it has basically vapor liquid mixture which is available over here right so that mixture of vapor and liquid is further separated into vapor liquid separator and that is available over here okay so if you see when feed is entering into this uh, vapor liquid separator it is appearing from this schematic that that connection is perpendicular to the shell okay this is the shell and connection is perpendicular to the shell now what happens exactly in such type of vapor liquid separator feed enters tangentially not perpendicularly okay so because feed is entering tangentially it gets circular motion inside the evaporator and because liquid is heavier then the vapor it is basically at the inner periphery of the vapor liquid separator and from the wall of the separator it brings down okay and whatever vapor is available it is taking out from vapor liquid separator from this side okay so whatever liquid is available that we can take as a product and what we can also do to get the desired concentration of the liquid we basically recirculate the liquid in the heat exchanger okay so that further concentration of the liquid can be obtained and for that purpose we use recirculation pipe okay so if i ask you that what is an effect of the evaporator effect of an evaporator consist three different component the heat exchanger the vapor liquid separator and recirculation pipe right so all these three combination combinedly call as effect if i am saying second effect so whatever vapor is generated from this side it is entering into second it is entering into the heat exchanger over here and it is entering to the shell side of this heat exchanger okay and whatever liquid is available over here it will be used as a feed to second heat exchanger right so in that way so in that way we define the effects okay and now we will focus on different types of evaporators quickly so let's see that first of all we have open kettle or pan evaporator okay you all have done experiment in this in your heat transfer course okay so this consists of an open pan in which liquid is boiled okay so in this type of evaporator boiling of the liquid takes place where steam as a use where steam is used as a heating media or we have some internal heaters also like or we have some internal heaters also okay heat is supplied by condensation of steam in a jacket or in coils immersed in a liquid okay so sometime we also put the coiling which uh, is merged with the liquid and inside this coiling we have the steam okay and uh, instead of providing the steam in the coil we can also provide steam in jacket so heating media is steam and uh, liquid is evaporated through boiling okay so this is the image of on so this is the image of an open pan evaporator you can study about this in detail in this link right so these type of evaporators are used for concentration of jams and jellies and also for some pharmaceuticals product okay so in that way you can use open pan evaporators fine and next i am having and next i am having horizontal tube natural circulation evaporators and uh, in this natural and in this horizontal bundle of heating tube are used 
which is similar to the bundle of tubes in a shell and tube heat exchanger right the steam enters in the tube where it condenses and therefore evaporation takes place in shell side in horizontal natural circulation in horizontal natural circulation evaporator okay steam condensate leaves at the other end of the tubes vapor leaves the liquid surface often goes through some de entrained device such as baffle to prevent carry over of the liquid droplets and leaves out from the top right and uh, this type of evaporator is relatively cheap and is used for non viscous liquid with high heat transfer coefficient so these are some points about the horizontal natural circulation evaporator and we can further discuss this as these are mainly used in making distilled water from boiler field horizontal tube evaporators are used in pharmaceutical industry pulp and paper industry etc and they are relatively of low cost horizontal tube evaporators are not suitable for salting or scaling liquid and they have smaller capacity in comparison to other evaporators okay and further i am going to discuss advantages and disadvantages of horizontal natural circulation evaporator advantages are it is cheap easy to install requires less space for installation and can be used for batch and continuous operation disadvantage is this it is not suitable for viscous liquid because it has poor circulation condition okay so in that way we have discussed points about horizontal natural circulation evaporator now i am having vertical type natural circulation evaporator where i am using short tubes okay so as far as tube length is concerned usually it is 4 to 10 ft and in this evaporator vertical tubes are used and liquid is inside the tube okay so if you see here i am having the vertical tubes and uh, in this tube we usually have the liquid and steam is provided outside the tubes and in this type of evaporator liquid rises in the tubes by natural circulation okay so this type of evaporator is not used for viscous liquid because it is difficult to because it is difficult for vis because it is difficult for viscous liquid to move on its own right and uh, we have some advantages and disadvantages of this type of evaporator let's focus on advantages first it has high heat transfer coefficient at high temperature differences easy mechanical de scaling and relatively inexpensive because here we have vapor liquid separation as well as evaporation both are in single unit okay and further as far as disadvantage are concerned poor heat transfer at low temperature differences can be observed high floor space and weight because complete assembly is available in one unit relatively high hold up and poor heat transfer with viscous liquid okay so here we have these points about vertical natural circulation evaporator now we are considering vertical natural circulation evaporator but with the long tube okay so long tube means we have length we have tube length as 20 to 65 ft so usually 3 to 10 meter long tubes are used the formation of vapor bubbles inside the tube causes a pumping effect which gives quite high liquid velocity okay and liquid pass through the tube only once and is not recirculated fine so these are widely used to make condensed milk okay so if you consider here we have the image of long tube vertical evaporator where feed enters to the tube side and steam is entering to the shell side right so inside the tube vapor formation is taking place and vapor and liquid exits from this side and then vapor liquid separation occurs over here and from here we have the liquid as product and vapor as another stream in this way long tube vertical 
type evaporator are working and here it is not circulating. Okay. So, we cannot say that it is vertical tube natural circulating evaporator. It is only the long tube vertical evaporator where tube size are where tube length is usually 3 to 10 meter. Okay. And now we have falling film evaporator. Okay. So, as the name says it is the falling film and evaporation takes place inside the tube. Okay. So, what happens liquid is basically entering from the top of the tube and then around the periphery of uh, inner side of the tube liquid is available in the film. Okay. So, that is why it is called as falling film. Okay. So, when it is taking heat from the steam which is available in shell side, vaporization takes place and the vapor liquid mixture exits from the bottom of the tube and then it is entering into the vapor liquid separator, okay, where vapor and liquid are separating. Now, in this case as vapor liquid separator is available at the bottom of the tube where I am having vapor liquid mixture. Okay. So, in this case recirculation is also not considered. Okay. So, whatever liquid is available that comes in contact with the steam only once okay. and therefore, this type of evaporators are mainly suitable for heat sensitive material. Okay. So, you can observe the schematic so, you can observe the operation of falling film evaporator in this and you can read about this evaporator from this link. And if I ask you for better understanding of these equipment, it is better to have some video which are available on YouTubes. Okay. So, you can, so if you search by the name of these evaporators, you can find the YouTube video where the working you can understand very effectively. Right. And now, we have four circulation type evaporator and if you understand this that why I am using the four circulation because it is used specifically for fouling tendency liquid as well as for viscous liquid which are not which cannot recirculate on its own. Okay. So, this type of uh, vertical, so in this type of evaporator vertical tubes are arranged and length of these tubes are not very long. The liquid film heat transfer coefficient can be increased by pumping to cause force circulation of the liquid inside the tubes and this type of effect are and this type of evaporators are used for viscous liquid and here you can observe the schematic and details you can find here. Okay. So, lastly we have agitated film evaporator where if you see inside of the shell we have only one tube of larger diameter and in this tube we have agitated assembly. Okay. So, whatever liquid is available inside the tube that agitator basically is spread that uh, fill that agitator basically is spread that liquid at the tube periphery and at the outside of the tube we have a steam because of the heat transfer whatever liquid is available inside the tube it is basically converted into vapor. Okay. So, this is done in modified film evaporator with only a single large jacketed tube containing an internal agitator that point we have already discussed and liquid enters in this at the top of the tube and it is spread out by a turbulent film with the help of agitator blades. Okay. The concentrated solution leaves at the bottom and vapor leaves through a separator and vapor leaves the separator from above side as it is shown in this figure. So, this type of evaporators are very useful for heavily viscous liquid. So, you see here we have discussed the evaporator, we have seen its application and different types of evaporators. Okay. So, that is all for now. Thank you.